Okay, so I want to take a little bit of time and talk about user subroutines and how to go about running them uh, when you're running an analysis in Abacus. The first step is to make sure that you have your software properly installed, and that is the hardest part in my opinion, uh, making sure that you have your Fortran compiler linked to Abacus as well as Visual Studio. Um, you can find the software requirements on the, or in the Ab Abacus documentation. Um, you have to do things like setting the environment variables, as well as modifying the Abacus uh, batch file and the Abacus command prompt to call on the Fortran and Visual Studio. Uh, my current setup that I'm running is Abacus 2019. Uh, I do have Visual Studio 2019 installed and I'm running it with the Intel One API compiler. Uh, note that the One API compiler is not compatible with Abacus 2019, but it does work with some modification and I'll show you what that looks like here in just a minute. Before you get started, uh, it's important that you check that your system is set up properly. Uh, you can do this uh, by checking the Abacus verification. Uh, you do this in the Abacus command prompt by running Abacus verify dash user. You can also check the system info to make sure that the uh, that Abacus is recognizing your compilers uh, by going to the Abacus command prompt and running Abacus info equals system. Um, both of those um, techniques will show you that uh, you have the compilers installed and that Abacus is recognizing them properly. In this presentation, uh, we're going to talk about user subroutines, and there are a lot of user subroutines available in Abacus, uh, and so this is probably what has prompted you to, to look into this topic, is that, that you've run into some limitation within the graphical user interface or there's something that you want to do in your model, but you can't do it in the GUI, and uh, you need to create your own user subroutine to do that. Um, user subroutines are very useful, uh, but at the same time, it is sort of an advanced feature, and so you have to make sure that you really understand what Abacus is doing before you can actually use these advanced features. To run a model using user subroutines, you need two things. The first is an input file, and the second is Fortran code that contains the subroutines. Um, you can read the Abacus documentation extensively on how variables are defined, dimension, called upon, and so on and so forth. So whatever uh, user subroutine you choose to go with, make sure you read the documentation and read it thoroughly and make sure you understand what it's telling you. Um, so that you don't inadvertently make a, a major error in your code. The example that I'm going to show you is for a user-defined element. Uh, we're just doing a user-defined element for a 2D linear beam element. Um, we're going to use this element to model a cantilever beam that has the following properties. So it's fixed at the left end, it's free at the right end, uh, it has a length of 100, E is 10,000, I is 100, area is 2, and there is a 12.5 uh, uh, unit load in the downward direction at the right end of the beam. So we would expect the beam to deflect downwards. This is a very simple mechanics problem. We know the exact solution. Uh, it's going to be PL cubed over 3 EI, so we can check that. For, for this problem and, and compare it to our solution that we get in Abacus. The first part of the creating the model deals with the input file. Um, I call this beam underscore UEL dot INP. You can edit this in any text editor. I use Notepad, um, but basically uh, you start with some keywords which are identified with the star and you follow the convention that Abacus follows. Uh, there's a tip at the bottom here that says that you can learn how to write the input file by looking at the keywords reference manual. Um, most of this stuff is standard Abacus model stuff. You know, we need to define the nodes, we need to define the elements, the material properties, the boundary conditions, the loads, the step, and so on. Um, what's highlighted in red here is the stuff that is specific to the UEL. So we define a user element. It has a type U1. U1 is just a name for the element. Uh, we can give it any number from 1 to 100. 
Um, you know, it, it doesn't matter. But if you were creating a model that had more than one element type, then you might have U1, U2, U3, or whatever, um, and, and uh, use that to identify what type of element. So for the U1 type of element, it's going to be a two-node element. It needs two coordinates per node, meaning that we're just modeling it in two-dimensional space. So we just need the X and Y coordinates. And then it has three properties associated with it, which we define uh, using the UEL property keyword. The numbers 1, 2, and 6 identify the degrees of freedom that we're activating for this particular element. And so basically what we're doing is we're telling Abacus that the element can displace in the X and Y directions and that it can have rotation about the, the sixth degree of freedom, which is the, the Z direction, the, the Z rotation, I'm sorry. Um, then we define our elements. We prescribe them the type U1 so that it's calling on our user element. And then we define the UEL property. Uh, we said it has three properties. Um, the properties are the area, uh, the moment of inertia, and uh, Young's modulus. And we do that for L set beam. Um, you should be familiar with creating sets in element sets and node sets uh, when you're creating these input files. And so it's just standard convention for Abacus. Everything else is, is pretty standard. Uh, you will notice at the bottom that I use the node print keyword, which tells Abacus to print the output to the .dat file. Um, that's important because uh, when you're working with user subroutines, it's often you often need to refer to the .dat file. Uh, and so that's why we want to print it there as opposed to some other file or some other location. Uh, in this case, we're just looking at displacements. So I'm just plotting, or not plotting, but reporting what the displacements are at the end of that step. Next, we come to the Fortran code. The first line you can ignore if you're using a compatible Fortran compiler. The only reason I need to include, include this line is because I'm not using a compatible Fortran compiler and my compiler doesn't know the difference between, or it doesn't, it can't, um, it doesn't know that lowercase UEL and uppercase UEL are the same thing in Fortran. So I have to tell it to do that. Um, everything else is, is pretty standard for a user subroutine. Um, so at the top here, we have the standard UEL heading where we have subroutine UEL uh, and it calls upon all these different variables that get passed in from Abacus, as well as what we pass out from our user subroutine. Uh, we have this include statement, abaparam.inc, and the include statement uh, means that it uses um, uh, an implicit uh, real designation for um, variables that begin with any alphabetical letter except for I, J, K, L, M, N. I, J, K, L, M, N is, referred, is, is reserved for uh, integers. So that's what that include statement does. Um, and then we have dimensioning. Uh, this is also standard. You just pull this straight out of um, the uh, user subroutines uh, reference manual. Um, but basically, these are the dimensions for those variables that get passed in and, and back and forth between the subroutine and abacus. Uh, then we come to my part of the code. I defer, de define INERT to be the moment of inertia. And so I have to call that a real variable because Abacus would otherwise identify it as an integer. And I don't want it to be an integer. I want it to be a real number. And the number for that integer is actually 10 or 100. I mean, if you look back at the input file, I get my area moment of inertia and in Young's modulus from the props array. And then I calculate the length of the element based on the nodal coordinates. I initialize the right-hand side vector and the A matrix. Uh, there's a note here on the right-hand side of the slide that says that the A matrix is the tangent stiffness matrix and RHS is the residual force vector. For a linear problem, this is equal to negative A matrix times U. Um, so that's how we would define that uh, in this particular subroutine. Then we go ahead and we define A matrix. A matrix is just the stiffness of a linear 
beam element. And so I can just calculate those numbers directly, you know, AE over L, 12EI over L cubed, and so on and so forth. So I just uh, implement that into my user subroutine for the axial stiffness and the bending stiffness. Um, if you're creating your own elements, presumably these would be uh, more complex relationships uh, where you would have um, shape functions and whatnot. But for this case, I'm just defining it directly. One thing that I do a lot of when I'm debugging a uh, user subroutine is I use a lot of print statements to print to the .dat file. Um, at the top of this slide, you can see that I'm writing the A matrix to the uh, .dat file. Um, then I also write the U and DU, so the displacement vector and the incremental displacement vector, uh, just to verify what, what Abacus is using for those displacements when it passes it into my subroutine. Then I have my uh, calculation of the force residual, uh, where I'm taking minus A matrix times U. And then I'm also writing that right-hand side vector to uh, the .dat file so that I can debug it, so that I can figure out and make sure that I'm calculating that force residual correctly. Uh, notice that uh, the, the code 6 is used to write to the .dat file. If you look in the Abacus manuals, you can see uh, the codes for other files that you want to write to. Um, it's just that I find it useful uh, using the, the DAT file. Then what we do is we submit the job. Uh, in the Abacus command prompt, what we do is we make sure that the files are all located in the working directory, and then we submit the job as follows. Um, so you have Abacus, then you have the job name, which is equal to the name of the input file, and then user, and that's equal to the name of the Fortran file. And you do include the extension .for. I want to show you what this looks like for uh, sort of a live uh, demonstration here. So we have abacus job equals beam UBL user equals beam UEL dot four. And basically what it's going to do is it's going to submit the job. Um, and there's really nothing else that we get out of the command prompt. I'll, we'll go take a look at the .dat file next. OK, so here is the .dat file. Um, it's got some basic heading information. This is what comes up when it reads the input file. You'll see that I get a warning because I didn't define any state dependent variables uh, in this problem, but we didn't need them. So it just assumes that we just have one. Um, then down here under our step, it defines, uh, or we, you can see where we've written out the stiffness matrix and we can compare that back to what we would get if we did hand calculations and it does match up. Here's our displacements. And then we have our right hand side vector. And then we just, you know, it, it repeats that for every element and for every time that the subroutine is called upon. Um, if we come down here to the bottom, you can see that we have our uh, displacements outputted for nodes one, two, and three. And the displacement at the free end is minus 4.17, which is equal to the exact solution if we used PL cubed over 3EI. So we do get the correct answer there. Um, but this is a, a really useful place to go if you're trying to debug things, if you're trying to figure out why isn't my subroutine working. Um, you know, maybe, you know, the, the residual force vector isn't being calculated correctly or something like that. But I mean, in this case, we're getting a reaction force of 12 and a half and a bending moment of 625 at that left support, which tells me that things look good um, from, from the force calculations. Okay, so like I said, debugging information from our Fortran code was written to the DAT file and our input file. We asked for displacements to be written to the DAT file, so that's all good and well. Uh, if your user subroutine doesn't run or if it fails to converge, you may also look at the message file because uh, a lot of useful information is written there as well. So that's pretty much it. So user subroutines are not as uh, overwhelming or scary as you may think they are, um, but it is important to read the Abacus manuals thoroughly.
Uh, you want to use a lot of write statements when you're debugging to make sure that your matrices are being calculated the way that you expect them to be calculated. Um, I recommend starting with a really simple problem and then add complexity to it. So if I'm trying to uh, write a code for a nonlinear finite element, I always start with a linear problem first. I always start with a problem where I can solve it by hand and then compare back. Uh, it's just a good practice to make sure that, that you start simple, get all the bugs worked out, and then you continue to add on to it. Um, make sure you read the error messages in the .dat file or the .msg file to understand why the code won't run. If you do run into a compilation error or you do run into uh, some other error that comes up. Um, and the last thing I have to say is to be patient um, because writing user subroutines can be very uh, exhausting. It's hard to find the bug. And uh, a lot of times you just have to like keep trying and keep trying and keep trying. So uh, hang in there and good luck.